Forgive me, Father, for I have finned. See, because fishes have fins. I'm making a video about fish sandwiches. I think this would be good for the intro. So, so this is the intro of the video. It's it's a it's a good pun. I think I think this is really funny. Greetings and happy Friday, my parishioners of Our Lady of So Far So Good Parish. I hope you're having a happy Lent. It's the second Friday in Lent. Ash Wednesday was last week, so I hope you're keeping to your Lenten resolutions. I'm keeping to mine very well. This year, I've given up showering and washing my face. For those of my viewers who are going to hell when they die, Lent is the time of year when billions of Christians all over the world remember the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert before the Easter season. It's a time of year when Catholics are encouraged to engage in prayer, almsgiving, and giving up chocolate or something and being really grumpy about it. But it also means that you have to abstain from eating meat on Fridays, with the exception, of course, of fish. Since Christ was crucified on Good Friday, a sacrifice of his mortal flesh, the Catholic Church teaches that her faithful disciples should abstain from eating flesh on Fridays in Lent as an act of penance. But I believe it's because the Pope wants to hog all the pork chops for himself, because he's a greedy little guy. And centuries of Catholic culinary tradition and innovation have all culminated into Lent into one of the greatest American culinary traditions the church basement fish fry. Gloria in excelsis Deo, I love me some fish fry. There is nothing better on God's green earth than going into the basement of St. Benedict's Catholic School and loading up that styrofoam plate with overcooked pieces of cod, soggy crinkle cut fries, and uh, warm coleslaw. It's Midwestern excellence, truly a Michelin star experience. And on a fateful Friday in the year 1962, a McDonald's franchise owner in Cincinnati noticed that hamburger sales would plummet during the Lenten season in his predominantly Catholic neighborhood. So he slapped a processed fish patty, some tartar sauce, and half a slice of American cheese on a springy steamed bun, and the rest is fast food history. The filet -O fish was born, and by 1965, it was flying off the counters of McDonald's all over the country. The McDonald's filet -O fish is the most Catholic food ever created, truly. I would argue even more Catholic than communion wafers. I mean, every Catholic in this country has eaten their weight in these things by this point in their life. They're such an important part of Catholic culture, and they're a perfect nostalgic treat to anyone who's ever thought, oh, it's a Friday in Lent, isn't it? Should probably eat fish or something. I haven't even been to church in I don't know how long. What even sorry, is my confirmation name again? How am I gonna raise up with the kids? point anymore? What's the point of any of this? But what if McDonald's isn't a very viable option to a young, very devout Catholic like me? How is a young, very devout Irish Catholic boy like me going to get his fast food fried fish fix? Well, thankfully, the capitalist machine has plenty of options for us Catholics, as every single fast food chain in this country has tried some kind of fish option at some point. So today, I am going to rank every single fast food fish sandwich that was within five miles of my apartment. Now, this isn't a perfectly extensive list, but I live in a, in a quite a dense urban area, so there are quite a few options to choose from. Now, this list is not going to include Long John Silver's, that is, Protestant food. I'm also not including anything tuna-related, like the Subway tuna, because it needs to be fried fish. And Subway's tuna isn't even real tuna. We don't know what the hell that stuff is. So I'm restricting my list to just fried fish sandwiches. Two hours later. So I went out and got six fish sandwiches from six different restaurants. Here they are. We're gonna find out which one is better or the most comparable to uh, to the filet of fish that we all know and love. A little communion wine to wash this down. So we're gonna do the cheapest sandwich in our list first, which was the White Castle fish slider with cheese. It came in at just under $3. And it is also the smallest sandwich, of course, by a lot. But first, of course, this is a Catholic show. We need to say grace. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy fish I am about to receive into my stomach and pass through my colon. Amen. And with your spirit. Much like the filet of fish, it's a little square patty. Fish are not square, so it's definitely processed, been ground up, turned into a small patty form, getting crumbs all over my floor. 
Def much better than I was expecting, honestly. I don't expect a lot from White Castle. For what this is, you know, I could, I could snack on two of these. It would be better with some tartar sauce and probably be better after a, a night of heavy drinking. I'd give this like a, like, like a C tier. Not the worst thing in the world, but any port in a storm. So we've gone from the smallest sandwich to the, what I hope is the biggest sandwich. It's named the Big Fish from Burger King. It better live up to its name. This thing isn't big. I want all of my $4.45 back that I paid for this. Once again, we got a square patty. Uh, it is pretty comparable in size to the Whopper. So now you can have uh, a sandwich that's the size of a, of a Whopper uh, with none of the sin and twice as much foot lettuce. You like that one? That's good, right? That like the meme. Like, like that one's like the meme. I did the meme. The foot Burger King foot lettuce meme. This one's still this one's still warm, thank God. Mmm. Oh, oh, uh, uh. I don't I don't know if this from the fish or the tartar sauce they're using. There's a weird aftertaste going on. The bun is very nice. The bun is better than I remember Burger King being. I've been at Burger King a long time. Something about the sauce just tastes really odd. Like it's, it's, it's almost like it's gone rotten. So this one is not great. I honestly might think that the, for what it is, the White Castle one was better. So this one is probably still a C tier, but just below the White Castle. Up next is the sandwich I had to drive the farthest for. This is the Wild Alaskan Fish Sandwich from Dairy Queen. Not looking forward to this one. Dairy Queen, of course, as we all know, very well known for their food. There was a journalist from Business Insider who described this sandwich as identifiable as something that once swam. So we have a new shape unlocked. This patty is triangular. Have not seen that yet. They're definitely trying to uh, more closely resemble the shape of an actual fish fillet. I don't think we've seen a whole piece of fish yet. I think all of these so far have still been kind of ground up fish patties, but let's give it a go. Cheers. Oh God, it's falling apart in my hand. Very interesting. They say if you ask them really nicely, they'll grind this up into your blizzard for you. This one is surprising me so far. This one, I am very shocked. Every time I've been to Dairy Queen, the food has been awful. The food is just there so they can sell something to sell you ice cream with. It has, adds a nice kind of almost sweetness to it. Lettuce is looking a little floppy, a little light on the lettuce, all kind of fell towards the back of the sandwich. Tartar sauce is pretty good, nice and tangy. Tastes all right. This one's pretty good. Uh, B tier, B tier. This is the best one I've had so far. Up next is the Wendy's Crispy Panko Fish Sandwich. I find it interesting that none of these sandwiches I've had so far have identified what kind of fish it is. I don't know if you guys know this, there's a lot of different kinds of fish in the ocean. It's just, it's disappointing that Wendy's usually prides itself on their fresh, never frozen beef, and you, you can't say that about their fish. There's just absolutely no way. Wild caught Alaskan fish. They make a point to put it right there on the label. They're making a point to tell you that it, there's some semblance of freshness in this, but they're still not specifying what kind of fish we're rocking with. Okay, you gotta be shitting me here. We got another square patty. I mean, this is horse shit. They're trying to tell me this is wild caught fresh fish. No fish comes in a square, idiot. <laughs> Why is there a hard piece in it? What the f***? The lettuce, it's, instead of shredded lettuce, is one big piece of lettuce. Got a nice snap to it. Uh, the fish itself, underwhelming. Tartar sauce, very light. And the pickles, once you get a bite in there, they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. I can, it definitely tastes like there's more filler in it than normal, but uh, not the worst thing. Uh, just it's I'd put it just below the uh, the Dairy Queen at this point, B tier. And finally, we have arrived at a sandwich that actually tells you what kind of sandwich it is, and it's spicy. This is a spicy sandwich. I'm very excited. This is the spicy fried grouper sandwich from Popeyes. Now, Popeyes kind of burst onto the sandwich scene a couple of years ago with their chicken sandwich. Now that they're, they've really disrupted the fast food sandwich game. So I'm excited to see what their spicy fish has in store. Comes in a nice bag, much like the chicken sandwich, really keeps it hot. This was the first one that I bought, so if it's still warm, I'm gonna be very impressed. And it's soggy and cold. Oh, it's so wet. Why is this so wet? But look at this behemoth here, guys. This is a nice big piece of fish. This is a real patty here. It, it looks a lot like their chicken. I hope they didn't just give me the chicken instead of the fish. I don't want to break my fast. It is Friday and Lent after all. Let's see how this one goes. 
Finally, a real piece of fish, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, if it were hot, I would enjoy it even more. Bun is nice and spongy, a brioche bun. The pickles add, 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 a, add a tartness that's very welcome to break up the spiciness uh, of the sauce. I mean, this is just excellent. I mean, this is the first S tier, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe the only one. Who knows? We got one more to find out, but this is a wonderful sandwich. Thank you, Mr. Popeye. Now, finally, we have the most expensive sandwich on our list coming in at a whopping $8. The North Atlantic Cod Sandwich from Culver's. Right off the bat, they tell you what kind of fish it is and where they caught it from. So, I'm very excited by this news. That means that they are confident in this product. This one's very different. This one comes on a hoagie roll. Oh my goodness. Hold on just a moment, everybody. I need you to see this. Look at this piece of fish, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, this is just incredible. It, this is a full actual piece of fried fish. If there were bones in it, I'd be that much happier. Straight out of Wisconsin, let's give it a try. <sighs> this is the king. You could serve this to be on a plate at a restaurant, and I wouldn't know that it's fast food. Just enough lettuce and tartar sauce, the cheese is melted perfectly. I mean, this is a one, this is a treat. This tastes like it came straight out of the fryer at St. Bernadette's Parish, onto a styrofoam plate, just for you. Just a wonderful experience. SS tier. I'm the best one. By a Wisconsin mile. Amen. So after some thoughtful consideration and some heavy breathing and sweating, here is my official list for these sandwiches. At the very bottom, we got Burger King. I mean, just, it was atrocious. Brown lettuce, really bitter tartar sauce. Uh, they say I can have it your way. Well, my toilet is going to have my weight on top of it when I when I'm pooping this out and it's gonna be painful because it was a cause it was a bad sandwich and it's gonna clog up my colon up next number five is White Castle not the greatest by any means but for what it was it's fine it's a fish stick with a piece of cheese on a bun and sometimes that's all you need Number four is Wendy's. I expected much better out of Miss Wendy. The breading was fine, but the fish was mostly filler. Everything else about the sandwich was pretty lackluster. Number three is the Dairy Queen sandwich. Definitely tastes like something that swam. I was not expecting to like this one as much as I did. For a place that's not known for their food, they really kind of knocked this one out of the park. Still no filet -O fish but it's up there. Number two is the Popeye's Spicy Flounder Sandwich. This one really impressed me. Popeye's really is the, the leader of the fast food fried sandwich game, and their fish is no exception. Sweet and spicy Cajun sauce with pickles and a brioche bun. A little greasy, but wonderful nonetheless. And finally, number one, the Holy Grail, the Mac Daddy, the Hail Mary, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Culver's Cod Sandwich. This thing is absolute perfection. The cod is fresh. It tastes like it came straight out of your grandmother's Dutch oven. It's a wonderful experience. Almost as good as a Catholic basement fish fry supersedes the level of fast food fish sandwich. Certified the most Catholic sandwich on this list. Nothing's more Catholic than Wisconsin fish fry. And this sandwich nails it. It's perfect. Mwah. Blessed. So if you disagree with my list and want to try it for yourself, please go out and support these giant corporations. There's only 30 something more days left in Lent, so they won't be around much longer. But recent trends show they may not be coming back next Lent either. Fish sandwiches at fast food restaurants are kind of falling to the wayside as many Catholics opt for other fish options like sushi or poke or even vegan options like impossible and beyond meat. A lot of these fish sandwiches are Go in the way of the dodo, which is meat technically and would not, Catholics would not be allowed to eat a dodo if they were still alive during Lent. But honestly, the biggest threat to the fast food fish sandwich is that more and more people in this country are leaving the Catholic Church. A recent data poll showed that 10% of this country's population identify as former Catholics. I mean, what gives? Why are young people leaving the Catholic Church? I mean, what reason would young people, specifically children, want to distance themselves from such a trustworthy institution? Why would you not want to be Catholic? Only the Lord may know the answer to this, but nevertheless, lapsed Catholics are a growing market that need to be tended to in order to keep the fast food fish sandwich alive. Now, if I could offer some free marketing advice to any advertising executives who are listening, it would be this. If you can't make young people stay in the Catholic Church, 
then make them feel bad for leaving. There's over 33 million lapsed Catholics in this country, and every single one of them has a crushing sense of guilt etched deep into their soul. And even if they left the church for valid reasons, they have to have some warm memories of the Catholic community, right? Like the music, right? Catholic church music is fire. All certified bangers. The spirit and song hymnal, zero skips. Perfect. Top to bottom. Just mwah. So if you really want to sell your fish sandwiches to lapsed Catholics during Lent, I suggest that you appeal to their crushing sense of shame that they feel every single day, while also playfully riffing on the rich musical tradition of Catholicism. And I have got just the song for you. Well, it's a Friday in Lent, you should be eating some fish. Our cod is Atlantic cod. It's the flavor you remember from the parish basement. Our cod is Atlantic cod. And the Lord will always love you even though you are a sinner. He died on the cross, but still you chose to leave. You can only make it up to him by eating fish for dinner. And, and his mercy you shall receive. Our cod is Atlantic cod. It's fried in a batter of beer and served on a pretzel. But our cod is Atlantic cod. Our cod is Atlantic cod. It's fried in a batter of beer and served on a pretzel. But our cod is Atlantic cod. Try the new lapsed Catholic cod special for only three sixteen every Friday at Haggerty's. Thank God. The video is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to you for watching until the end. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Which, what fish sandwich is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Bye. Go home. Mass is over.